We are waiting for Theo. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So Theo will. Uh, okay. So we, so we will keep the schedule as it was. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we'll see. In this way, maybe Emanada will not rush. Yes, yes. Great. So maybe we can uh, start now. Okay, so thank you so much for joining this panel. Um, this panel is named the Web of Subjectivation, Objects, Characters, and Puppets. Um, we will stay together uh, for uh, uh, for the next uh, three presentations uh, from uh, Takenobu Chikaraishi, um, Jean-Paul Formento and Emmanuel Quinz. I am sadly have to announce that Jean-Paul Formento will not able to join us. Ah, sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm really sorry also uh, for um, as you, but uh, we have uh, Theo that will, uh, will, uh, we have, he will have some material from uh, Jean-Paul Formento. Uh, I think you have the abstract of this of his presentation. Uh, yes, okay. So we will... Um, There's also um, like three videos. Um, okay, great. That, that I will show. Okay, great. So we will have, an, in any case, material. Um, and, uh, and then uh, we can... Uh, if we have time, I, I hope so, uh, we can discuss all together. And then in particular, we will discuss all together in the forum after the panel. OK. Uh, so let's, um, OK. So uh, let's start with the first uh, uh, the first intervention. is from uh, Takenobu Shikaraishi, founder of uh, the Reiwa Kogei LLC, and also associate professor to the Tokyo University of Arts, and member of the ATR Laboratories of Osaka. Um, he will talk about uh, the development of a new robot business named on Kogei and Dart. So since I don't know what is Kogei, I'm really, I'm really curious to, to know something more about it. Please, Shikarishi. Uh, yes, uh, can I share my laptop? So. Yeah, here. Uh, Kogei is a Japanese traditional, traditional uh, handcraft, uh, uh, traditional handcraft and uh, arts. Uh, it enrolls a traditional Japanese craft. Uh, Kogei made uh, for everyday use with certain purpose, uh, but uh, aesthetically uh, pleasing. Uh, so, uh, for example, this one. Uh, uh, so Japanese uh, are very uh, traditional style and of uh, daily use uh, handcraft things. So I want to use uh, these things for robot. Uh, look at this one. Oh. Uh, this is uh, national uh, national treasure of uh, uh, Kogé ornament. This is made in 18th century. Uh, in Japanese history, uh, from eight, uh, 15th to 16th century, uh, war is uh, very much occurs, so uh, armor makers are so busy, but uh, after this age, uh, Japan is very uh, uh, peaceful time uh, to the 19th century. So uh, armor makers are lost of their jobs, 
So they are uh, try to make uh, this uh, like this one. So they keep to uh, maintain their skills and uh, uh, continue to their uh, uh, next ages. Uh, this one is just an uh, ornament, but I tried to install uh, mechanical robotic uh, mechanism into th this one. Uh, one. <laughs> this is so very expensive one, so I cannot do it. So, so my front of one is a, a, a have a same skill to make this one. So I made this robot. <laughs> this is insect robot. So uh, my friend Ken Sakaihara made this uh, robot. So yes. Uh, his work is not uh, uh, from uh, before this one. His work is not moving but by yourself. So I give him a uh, work uh, to uh, uh, interactive uh, function to the uh, people. So we can use these uh, robots uh, to the, uh, 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 as a computer interface. I, my company has a lot of uh, ability to make uh, robots for, uh, this is a dinosaur robots. Uh, this is a uh, research robot and conductors robot Android and this one. Uh, we will take, uh, yes. A lot of um, jobs. And, uh, my background is a uh, uh, robot, uh, human robot theater. So uh, these are these performances are conducted uh, uh, seventeen countries and continue to uh, performing art. Uh, that's all, thank you. Okay, so your company will, will sell this kind of, uh, of robots from what I think, okay, 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 thank you. Um, I don't know if there are questions on this presentation. Uh, okay, so maybe Theo, would there, you... There's something, sorry, I have just a quick question. Uh, something I did not understand. Um, are these, the, the robots shown, are these more of puppets or more of interactive by themselves? Uh, yes, uh, I can. Uh, we can install the uh, interactive uh, function, mm -hmm. but now I, uh, we are making uh, just an uh, appearance. Okay, great. Mm. Please, Isabella. Yes. Um, uh, I have a question because this metal. Koge robot, yes, is very, very interesting. And uh, I am asking myself uh, which aspects from the Koge tradition that you should take in consideration when you constructed this, this insect, this uh, metal Koge robot. Mm -hmm. yeah. ah, I see, yes. Uh, look at this page. My background is uh, engineering, so we changed to the uh, art area. So uh, in, uh, 
at the first time, I cannot uh, understand uh, what uh, the artist say. So I define uh, the word of art as in my head. So uh, this is a, this graph is, uh, means that so uh, right side, uh, right circle is a, a field of objectivity. This is a science and engineering world. So science is a um, inquiry for the world and engineering is a making a function to uh, solve problems. I think it's same to the, uh, uh, I think uh, it's same construction in, in, in art world. So uh, this is a, a field of subjectivity. Uh, this is art. Art is uh, same to the science, inquiry for the world. So from uh, art method, uh, design for sympathy making, the, then people are uh, uh, solving the problem. Koge is a little bit different. Koge is a, uh, uh, Koge start from uh, purpose, uh, making just tools. But uh, Koge is not defined from the art. Uh, uh, they uh, try to make uh, something uh, more beautiful one, uh, try to make to beautiful so they uh, uh, forget about their purpose. So sometimes uh, their uh, tools are not for useful, but beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it, I love this uh, 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 stance. So uh, I love so, uh, I think it's the same to the robot. Robot means a uh, uh, robot is a uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 robot is born uh, for uh, um, problem solving, but we want to communicate, uh, talk, and uh, something more. It's the think it's same one. So Kogei beauty and uh, robot function is joined. Uh, I think I imagine uh, makes a more innovative something. That's the reason. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, please, Seven. Yes, uh, maybe to explain a little bit more. Uh, Koki is uh, try, trying to build a robot in, in the tradition, an affiliation that already exists in robotics since Masahiro Mori. We can remote to the period of the Mukta Institute in 1973, and also about Masahiro Mori uh, a new uh, theory in 2005 uh, during the um, uh, meeting of uh, uh, robotics engineer. He introduced the idea which coming really very, very from Koge uh, tradition, which is uh, a robot should arrive to a certain state of expression of an artistic ideal. Uh, uh, an artistic idealization of representation. So uh, what uh, the, this presentation show how uh, this uh, initiative is going uh, through affiliation in r r the robotic history. So just to implement the, the uh, Yes, uh, so I think only imagine a purpose now. So uh, this form, uh, this appearance is very uh, 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 interesting and beauty. So, uh, and the most important thing is a handmade. Handmade is, uh, can, uh, is uh, do not copy, make a, uh, uh, make a copy product. So I think it's uh, important for a robot. So, uh, hand uh, order made robot is uh, uh, most uh, uh, becomes a uh, majority for the uh, computer interface. I imagine uh, that's a way to the uh, implementation for robot. Thank you very much. Uh, 
I don't know if there are the questions, or maybe we can pass to the second, uh, uh, the second um, intervention. Uh, okay, so Theo uh, will uh, will uh, talk about the work of Jean Paul Formento, the robot being deviant machine, this functional objects. Uh, so please, Theo. Yes. So I will. I will read these. Uh his abstract. Um, so, to Jean-Paul Formentreau Jean, Jean, uh, Jean starts by a quotation by Bill Vaughan. It is better to collaborate with the machine than to fight against it or to resist. End of quote. His communication will propose to question what it means to be in relation, end of quote, and in dialogue end of quote, with robots on the stage of a theater or an exhibition, when they see themselves simultaneously endowed with autonomous and dysfunctional behavior. We will pay particular attention to the modes of being, end of quote, of these robots at the interface of the spectacular and the breakdown. To do so, we will study the polymorphous work of Canadian artist Bill Vaughan bringing to life artificial creatures driven by unbalanced algorithms. The goal will be to show how at the heart of these works questioning the deviant behavior of machines, psychotic robots constitute a new species of non-humans with whom relations of control and dialogues are staged. The examination of these relations deviates from the path often taken, but now perceived as quite ambivalent of anthropomorphism, consisting in designing robots in the image of human or seeing them in their duplicates in or seeing in them duplicates of the human. Indeed, if many artists have experienced the promises and limits of the dream of familiarity and union with the robot, this first tendency of humanoid robotics, that of animism or analogy, is seen partly upset by a dilemma inherent to artificial life, which the Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori called the uncanny valley, end of quote. He thus de designated a zone of dis discomfort or strangeness inspired by the disturbing strangeness theorized by psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, in which the more an android robot appears similar to a human being, the more monstrous its imperfection seemed to us. The humanoid, rather than generating empathy, could then lead to loathing, strangeness, worry. The analogy, the resemblance, therefore, has its limits, which can be disturbing, and on this level, at least, we are still very far from being able to imagine a technological singularity, end of quote. Likely to lead the, likely to lead, well, the technological singularity likely to lead to the in, in distinction between human and robot. But the path taken by Bill Vaughan and his companions of scene is quite different. It invites, uh, it, it invites us to overturn the ideal of the intentional and behavioral autonomy of robots, which, like humans, also have their weakness, derailments, or bugs. My communication will be based on a series of installations, performances, and recent shows, along which Be Bedlam with Simon Penny in 2001-2003, and with Louis-Philippe Demers, Hysterical Machines, 2002-2006, DSM-6, 2014, Inferno, 2015-2020, Gladly ironic, even sarcastic, 
These works question cybernetic processes and the dilemmas of artificial life to the point of considering the possible derailment of machines and robots from the field of behavioral psychology. So I will show now the videos chosen by Jean-Paul Formentreau. Can you see the screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, I will put some sound. So there is two more, shorter, I think, this one, which is uh, Inferno. Uh, it's a, I ju just make a note because I, I, I studied it a little bit. It's a participative uh, piece where people are, um, are chosen before the performance to um, wear this kind of cybernetic um, armor in a way that controls the body. Okay, and last, sorry, but not least, the blind robot. Oh.
Just it's four minutes long. Uh, should I should I play the whole thing or maybe jump to another scene? Or do we have time for the whole? I don't know if uh, uh, if uh, Jean Paul said you something about it. Uh, no. I was just but yeah. Maybe, looking, maybe looking. you can just jump in order to have an idea. But in any case, these videos are really 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 interesting. Yes. I'm really sad. Uh, I hope I hope uh, we will be able to have uh, Jean Paul from in a, in, a, in another meeting maybe uh, because I'm really curious about uh, about this presentation. Ah, just after that, there's a little bit of, of text. Maybe we can. Okay. We can... Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's really strange, isn't it? I mean, it's like it's too much clothes. I don't know. I, there's too much intimacy. I don't know. It's very strange. It's, it's. I think it's happening in the dark. If it's the blind robot. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. If the, camera, if the camera looks like this, then it's really worst. <laughs> Sylvia. Yeah. Sylvia, you have a. Sylvia, please. Yeah. Hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hear me now? Yes. So I was saying thank you all again for this very interesting and rich presentation of today. And I don't know if I can comment now or you want to exchange later, but um, I, I think we have so... time. Sorry? I think we have time. Okay, great. So I was thinking I'm a big fan of the uh, work of uh, Luis Philippe Demers as well. And when I, I did not know there will be this presentation, so I'm I'm hoping we can exchange more with the author of the paper, but uh, so far for me, I was actually surprised to see uh, the teasers of these works because from the articles I could read about uh, the research they did, uh, the approach was rather more um, empathetic, for example, for the blind robot, I did not know that, um, I don't know if it's the aesthetics of the teaser with uh, this loud music and everything that happened in Inferno earlier, but from what I understood, this is more uh, related to this trust feeling and intimacy. Mm -hmm. And um, dark normally is just a setting, like uh, you have a, your, it's your own choice. It's always your own choice, even for Inferno as well. And you are in a trustful condition. So the touching of the face is done with very small, delicate gestures, at least from what I read from the papers they wrote upon this, um, this uh, uh, work. And I was uh, I was curious about this teaser of uh, a lot of uh, cyber metal <laughs> attitude that was kind of frightening and uh, relating re relating back to the work they did in the early '90s when um, they also like they work a lot with this uh, metal uh, type of performance to to cite Steve Dixon as well. But anyhow, for me it was I think the the way you present the work is also <laughs> giving having a, a big impact on what the actual work is. So I was curious to know how exactly the artist intention corresponds or not to, because they had, they contributed to, to the scientific work with some conclusions upon, even for Inferno, I found some articles and at one point they were rather happy to discover that the participants arrived to let go to this uh, state of uh, trusting the machine and the exoskeleton and doing some movements and then 
they discovered some of the people wanted to stay more <laughs> than the actual time of the performance. It was like one hour and a half or something like that. And eventually they, they found participants that wanted to explore more and that wanted to like see other type of movements that their body could do through this exoskeleton. So my feeling of, 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 the, of the lecture I had on the work was rather positive and constructing, but uh, constructive. But with these teasers, it's true that there, there, there is a heavy, like the teasers give the impression of a heavy, uh, no choice, human-like uh, attitude where uh, humans become uh, like uh, completely, uh, Ecrasé, completely smashed by the machines. So, yeah, it's a nice, uh, anyhow, it's a nice uh, dichotomy. It's a nice tension to work on and see exactly where is the artistic intention in between. So, hopefully, the author of the paper could uh, could uh, contribute to to these uh, questions. <laughs> it's the, the focus on trust is something that is really interesting. Uh, I mean, I'm really trying to, I mean, I was really impressed by this uh, blind robot. And I'm trying to project how I could feel being touched in the dark by something. And it's some, it, it, it's, I don't know, it's sunk in me, but at the same time, uh, can can be an interesting experience. In one of the versions, they put it depends on where they show it. But on one of the versions, they also put a mirror in front of the person that is getting uh, this uh, face uh, touch, like uh, to see exactly how you react to it, or, or also imagine. And I think it's related to the trust we give to blind people because it's also it's related to the title. But since the gestures are very at least from what I understood, I never experienced it, are, are supposed to be very small, tender, slow. Maybe you can relate to that feeling more than to the oppressiveness of the machine, but it's a, it's an open question, so I don't know. I, I really hope to have this possibility at a certain point to listen to the, uh, the, the full talk of Jean-Paul Formento. We, we will see if we'll be able to do it later. Um, so I don't know if there are other uh, other points on this. Otherwise, we can pass uh, to the intervention of Emanuele Quins. Um, Emanuele, please. Yes, I, I, share. Yeah, I share the screen. It works? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, I really would like to thank the organizer of the team, the symposium for inviting me, Erika, Isabella, Teo, uh, Salvatore. And in this short presentation, rather than presenting case studies, I would like to bring to your attention uh, a notion which uh, we proposed uh, with my colleague Samuel Bianchini in the context of our research project launched in 2012, and uh, that this notion of behavioral object, in French, uh, objet à comportement, which emerged from a historical study of in the intersection between uh, art and robotics, and which points to robotics object produced by artists, or at least uh, produced for artistic purposes, uh, can be useful uh, for describing a category of robotic artifact whose main characteristic is performativity, movement, and behavior. Even though in the course of the, our 10 years of, of research, we have not directly uh, explored stage experience, apart from a short workshop with the director Philippe Ken in Théâtre des Amandiers in Nanterre, I believe that that notion uh, I'm going to present can be relevant, operative, also in the context of performing arts. So as I anticipated, the definition of a behavioral object uh, is a heart of a research a program uh, that uh, we initiated uh, with Samuel Bianchini and also including other researchers like uh, Isabetta Zibetti and Florent Levillain in uh, 2012. And uh, in uh, was a collaboration between University de Paris 8 and, and uh, the Pompidou Center. And the idea, the program focused on the notion of behavior seen as increasingly fundamental in contemporary artistic creation and in design. However, 
instead of situating, situation, situating behavior in the realm of living, where it's usually found, our project undertakes to explore the dimension to uh, work, object, devices, and environment. How can we understand, theorize, experiment, and uh, conceive works and objects that incorporate a behavioral dimension by which we mean having a capacity for action and reaction, mainly physical, in relation to an environmental and more specifically to their audience. Within the frame, within that frame of, of, of that research, uh, we propose so the, the term of behavioral object, not really a neologism, but almost. Anyway, it is a sort of concept that which is not used at all uh, in, in, in the art field and nevertheless there exists a sort of tradition, a sort of counter history uh, of a behavioral object in art and that was my part in, in, in that research as an art and design historian. And so we, we can also start from the automata in the antiquity, but uh, we decided really to start from the, the 20th century. So what is a behavioral object? It is an object with some specificities a moving object, an autonomous object, a robot, evolving in the space without human intervention, an animated object driven by programming, engineering, and robotics. But a behavioral object is more than a simple robot. Its movement are interpreted by an observer as behaviors. And that is very important. as a sort of manifestation of intention, agency, or even personality. Some way, a behavioral object is an object which becomes a subject. In this uh, projective uh, potential, where the physical merges with the symbolic and even the mythical, resides not only the peculiarity, but also the attract the interest of behavioral object. And of course, it's very important to say that a, a behavioral object is a work of art or design. So as I said, in the art field, there is a tradition of behavioral object from the avant-garde or the early 20th century until contemporary art, artists produce machines which have no function, which are in fact dysfunctional, built to introduce formal innovation, surprise, doubt, or critical consciousness. Starting with the futurism, the movement were introduced in art and machine, not only to represent and apologetically the superpower, the myth of the functionalism and the frame of the industrial revolution, but sometimes as an instrument of critics from the useless machine conceived in the, in the 30s by the Italian designer Bruno Munari uh, into the homage on New York, to New York complex and rough machine uh, system realized by Jean Tingeli, a sort of kinetic sculpture whose performance was self-destruction, a sort of machine that committed suicide. And of course, in the, in, in, starting from the 50, the, 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 the focus point for our research was cybernetics as a true general theory of organization and systems who uh, cross path with the arts, thanks in particular to figure like Gordon Pask, Jack Burnham, and artists like Hans Hake, Nicolas Schaeffer. It was in that context that the term behavior gained centrality. As uh, Ross Ashby, explain cybernetics treats not things but waves of behaving. Behavior replaced movement, which was linked to the kinetic experiments of Dutier, which were primarily based on logic of formal composition. And now, uh, for example, in a very important book for us, uh, Behind Modern Sculpture, which was published in, in uh, 1968, Jack Burnham, has a sort of vision of the advent of new type of work that represent a cross between machine and living things. I quote him, electromechanical system with lifelike behavior. So cybernetic machine seek a relationship with the environment based on the notion of balance, equilibrium, homeostasis. And the, the, the example that you know, everybody knows the tortoise of, by uh, William Gray Walter. And uh, but other artists don't, don't hesitate to introduce also aleatory processes in the program of the machine in order to avoid the predictability of the retroaction cycle or, and try to introduce uncertainty, as did, for example, Nicolas Schaeffer in his uh, Cyberspace Dynamic Tower or Edward Inatovitz 
uh, an, an almost forgotten artist with uh, his robotic sculpture, the sensor. But for us, uh, the most precise example of behavioral object is represented by the floats produced by Robert Breer, abstract structure, me like minimal sculpture, moving very slowly in the space and impulse subtle modification of the landscape and provoke a sensation of strangeness and disorientation. So behavioral objects are mysterious objects. Alto is difficult uh, to tell what motivates the movement of the of that words. There is a very clear sense of the that the movement are motivated. Indeed, there is a sort of lingering sense of uncertainty surrounding the intention of these objects, whose actions do not seem to be governed by function or aims, but by the influence of the environment or even by internal in motivation that seem to endow them with a behavior, a kind of personality, uh, per perhaps even a sort of subjectivity. So the projection of intentionality they provoke is always linked with doubt because they seem to be suspended between animate and inanimate, organic and inorganic, uh, artificial and alive, human and non-human, behavioral object belong to reality as well as to realm of the fantastic. They are fascinating and disturbing at once. They provoke what uh, Freud called unheimlich the uncanny, a sort of discomfort which could become anxiety and fear in front of a familiar thing which appears slightly different, a sensation of suspension in front of an object whose nature is difficult to understand and to deal with. More recently, strange robots like Petit Mal by Simon Penny or the helpless robot by Norman White or the hysterical robots by Dune and Rabi appears in, in the art and design mostly in critical design, not as a super smart functional machine, but rather fragile, dysfunctional, problematic, even pathological machine, which show more personality than uh, smartness. So behavioral objects are instrumental to question the complex relation between human and non-human from the point of view of movement, of agency, but also considering the symbolic dimension as indeed the social, moral, and political dimension. Some object present also the interaction as a form of conflict between two intentions, some way refusing, uh, some way refusing the action or the power of the spectator or the user. And so the notion of misbehavior that uh, is very important for uh, our, our research and the notion of behavior object. An important part of our research, in addition to the historical and contemporary co uh, census of behavioral object, also has been the collaboration with artists. And I just mentioned one, uh, the French artist Celeste bossier mougenot uh, who started working on musical, musical systems, uh, sort of ecosystem, uh, where the interaction of uh, elements was meant to produce sound effects. But more and more in his work, uh, he introduced the notion of movement and behavior. Here you have uh, an image, uh, a short film of uh, the installation off-road. Uh, it was presented in the Abattoir in Toulouse. And, uh, so the, the installation is conceived as a sort of system or ecosystem where uh, living elements like the audience, the, the, the human body moving in that same space, uh, interact uh, with uh, animated object, in that case, uh, piano are moving. And so there is a sort of cybernetic feed between organic, mechanical, electronic, and digital flows and elements. And uh, Celeste boussier mougenot used a very interesting term in order to describe that kind of uh, uh, interaction. He said he, he talked about techno-animism, which is a quite uh, an interesting concept. So indeed, in this installation of road, the movement of the piano was linked uh, with the changing of the internal environment of the presentation space, but also the external with a sort of parameters like the wind. And in that case, the exhibition space becomes the place of, for a performance uh, that brings together humans and non-human. Uh, we collaborated with the artists also for the project producer for the French uh, Pavillon de Venice Biennale in 2015 where the artist disposed a sort of choreographic alchemy of three trees 
moving in time uh, with their metabolism, variation of the sap and uh, their sensitivity to light and shade. And uh, conceived as a sort of artificial nature, the work of Celeste borsi mujno is an example of how behavioral object can introduce uh, trouble, doubt, and uh, therefore complexity to our vision uh, of the world. And I will end with uh, uh, talking very shortly about the experiment part of our project linked to the, to the practice, because it's uh, really, uh, we uh, propose also uh, a robotic kit of modular robotic kit of uh, modular robotics in order to experiment with uh, artists and uh, we will try to do with Erica and we are your, your program of research uh, a workshop is, is, is one of our uh, aim so Three, uh, just three points uh, to, to, to describe the framework uh, of the, our research of uh, behavioral object in order also to, 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 to let uh, more and more useful that kind of, uh, of concept uh, can be presented very shortly by tri uh, triple negation. First, at uh, the difference of the mainstream robotic uh, digital um, uh, behavioral object are not anthropomorphic or zoomorphic objects. On the contrary, by using non-anthropomorphic and non-zoomorphic shapes, uh, we want to focus exclusively on the capacity of the movement to stimulate projection and attribution of behavior, or maybe uh, personality to the object. Second point, we have chosen to adopt a non-functionalist uh, approach. We try to conceive object movement, object action, not led to use well goal. It is a difficult point, uh, also because we want to, to provoke attribution of intention of the object driven by the affirmation of a kind of personality and affirmation of itself. For instance, when an object seems to refuse to do uh, something to affirm its, its free will, uh, its agency uh, will uh, be, be become more and more uh, visible. And so, for example, we work a lot with ro robotic people uh, working in robotics and trying to discuss how it's possible uh, to uh, uh, imagine a robot who wander around or uh, who hesitate. And uh, third point, and will be the end of my presentation, if we are tending to don't adopt a sort of task-oriented uh, approach, we are trying as well to eliminate the possibility for a weaver to see how it works, or more precisely the motorization of the other action. So uh, we try to consider uh, to, to let uh, that kind of uh, mystery in a way uh, uh, that will really uh, has to remain uh, for the project. So we really work to try to work uh, with the object uh, that are um, in a way uh, difficult to understand. So this triple, uh, triple negation help to define personality for objects uh, with a sort of uncertain of incarnate dimension, a state between object and subject, as I say. So this approach try to uh, revert in a way the anthropocentrism paradigm uh, common in human computer interaction or robotics and allows to a sort of critical dimension uh, based uh, on the approach of art to be introduced. And so, we are really uh, claiming the idea of a sort of reflective, critical and speculative robotics in which the performance of uh, the object uh, staged what uh, Andrew Pickering has called a sort of ontological theater of the relationship between human and non-human. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Emanuele, because it was uh, really, really, an interesting presentation for all your um, discourses of the state of art and uh, and the notion that I think it's uh, it's really interesting. I don't know if in the public there are questions. Uh, um, actually, I'm really interesting of the on the characterization of this definition. You said about you talked about no goals. Okay, could, could could you extend a little bit more? Because I'm 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 an, you know I'm a roboticist, I'm an engineer, so I'm used to approach. I mean, I need a goal. 
usually. So yeah. for me, this, we, we is, this have... is really cool. We, we have many, many discussions with Jean-Paul Lomont, who is, uh, you know him as a great robotician, and, and he say exactly the same thing. So for, for, for robotics, they always uh, has been, has to be a sort of goal. So the robot is always a goal dream. But our idea is also to, to say that the goal is not uh, understandable at, uh, at the first moment for, for the audience. So uh, it's really, uh, the idea that, for example, the, the, uh, to introduce, for example, the notion of uh, misbehavior. So, so try to have robots that not behave as robots, as we expect that robot behave. That's, that's, that, that's the dimension. So, for example, the sort of provocation that, uh, that we discuss a lot about that with, uh, with Jean-Paul Lomont and other roboticians, to introduce hesitation uh, in the program of the robots it's it's uh, could be uh, very interesting also in order to uh, add a more empathic uh, you know dimension in the relationship so that kind of of uh, of um, element are the more and more used uh, in, in in also in social robotics but for us it's really important to uh, try to to analyze actually the uh, approach that artists so what an artist can introduce as an artist in the field of robotics. That is was really, and I think that that critical dimension could be uh, in a way uh, uh, expressed by uh, refusing the functionalism, which is uh, included in, 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 as you say, robotics has always uh, need a sort of goal. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. But this, this is really interesting also because it resonates with the presentation of Professor Ishiguro mm. of today, um, like using robots to better understand the humans. No, and you talked about the hesitation. So, actually, I mean, define the goal, the purpose of the human machine is something that maybe is complicated. I mean, for me, I mean, I don't know my purpose. Uh, but, uh, and so, I mean, this push on this idea of uh, uh, that both robotics and uh, arts, performing arts, theater, work on the same point of trying to understand and actually make models in some way of, uh, of humans. Uh, this is really, this is really, really interesting. Yeah, but in, in a way, it's also, I think, that the, uh, it's not also to understand. I think what is important, that kind of experience of behavioral art objects, is that you don't understand precisely. Yeah. And it's important also sometimes not to understand. And also <laughs> beca because I think that trouble uh, will, uh, in, in, I would say, trigger another form of consciousness, maybe of limits. And because sometimes the problem, and, and, and it's also it also very important. We are we are working on publication, try to confront, for example, robotic with all the new philosophy of uh, you know new materialism, uh, object oriented um, um, ontology, and so on, which are trying also to question the anthropocentrism in a way. So uh, of course the machine is the, the product of uh, the action of of man, but in in the, in the main sign. In the same time, maybe is not uh, uh, only that that we and that's it's really the question for us with behavioral object. It's not on to to rassure us uh, and use that uh, that machine uh, as an instrument in order to understand more, etc. But maybe to to question and I would say in a sort of political uh, way uh, our position. We, uh, in front of machine, in front of all uh, other actors of the social world, which are non-human. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, Isabella, do you want to? Yes, yes. Uh, it is a really, really interesting presentation. And uh, um, I have a question about, about the audience which is the place of spectator mm. uh, uh, in this conception of, uh, of uh, art. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's uh, most of the, as I said, we, we, we really don't start, uh, not yet, I would say, working on with performing arts, but uh, in a way it is 
performing art because also when, when the object is moving also within a space of a, like a white cube of, of a gallery of a museum is really the action is really performative in a way and and also the relationship with the with the audience with the, is immediately performative so mm -hmm. because uh, it's it's not just a, a passive uh, relationship for example uh, some of the words are uh, I won't say dangerous, but I see as a sort of threatening for the audience. So before we saw Bill Vaughn, for example, and Sylvia said very precisely that it's a sort of attack from the machine to to the to the to the, to the human being in in the space. So that kind of relation is is really it's really important. And uh, we started to analyze, and uh, we work uh, for that with uh, Elisabetta. I, I have the impression that she is connected, but uh, and uh, Florence Levilla in order also to analyze uh, with uh, some uh, analytical instrument uh, coming from uh, cognitive science the reaction of the of the audience. So this is a very important part for of our our work. So we. So how, for example, the people will react, will uh, are completely frightened or on the contrary, try, try to uh, initiate a sort of relationship with the object, uh, mm -hmm. uh, try to, to fight them or to refuse the interaction. So it's, it's, uh, it depends of many, many things. Yes, yes. Even the initial uh, expectation uh, and after how it is confronted with the, with the piece of art, yeah, exactly. It's it's very important. So it's a, it's a, it's a very complicated question, of course, and we are really trying to, to define the criteria in order to analyze the, that kind of experience uh, and that kind of relation, which is uh, which is very difficult. Okay. But Thank I you. think it's a, it's a big challenge, and also uh, why not also to use a, a instrument, uh, theoretical and analytical instrument coming from other disciplines mm -hmm. could be very useful also for artists. I think. So that's why it's, it, I'm really aiming from uh, an in sort of interdisciplinary approach. And in, in a way that kind of object is really uh, on, on the border between, uh, between art, uh, science, technology, and social science and so on. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I don't know, you, yes, Francesca. Thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, presentation. Really, really interesting for me. And I would like to say that uh, uh, there is a project in Italy called uh, Puppet and Design, where object to be used um, used in performances and uh, uh, the relationship between design and puppets are studied. Uh, but uh, also we can see the objects come when we see an object come to life in a, in a stage is something like uncanny, I think. But uh, can we say that uh, in the context of uh, the exhibition or also in the museum, seeing behavior object is not uh, as uncanny as seeing them in the theater? What do you think about that? I think when I see a behavior object in a museum or in some exhibition, I think it's usual. Maybe the, the people visiting a museum is very, um, it's common for this kind of uh, audience to see something like that. Instead, when you see this kind of object behavior, on the stage, I think it's more uh, uncanny. I don't know if I have this yeah, yeah, question. So I understand perfectly. And, and I think that one of the, the, the elements is that we are more used to see that kind of object within the context of contemporary art. Because as I say, in the, tra the tradition of that kind of production, it's really start at the beginning with the kinetic, kinetic art. So we are more used to see movement or movement in object. But uh, it really depends of what uh, and how the, the artists uh, um, prepare that, that kind of experience. So sometimes could be really, really uh, 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 strange 
uh, and also, for example, the, the work of, uh, of Celeste Bussi Mujno uh, with the piano is, of course, at the beginning, it's a little bit surprising, but it's, it's not the, the surprise is not the aim. It's not just the, it's just the beginning of the, of, the, of the interaction. And then the idea is really to stay within the space and spend time to co uh, uh, sort of cohabitation of the same space with, with machines. So it's not only to produce uh, that uh, uncanny uh, uh, effect uh, uh, at the beginning, but really to uh, uh, propose an environment where human and non-human co can cooperate in a way or in a way also co uh, which is not in, uh, possible uh, that uh, same kind of experience in theater because of the time of the of the show which uh, with a beginning and the end which is really uh, precise uh, I, I, this is an, another kind of experience so i think it's uh, uh, maybe it's not very important to know, to to say if it's more uncanny there or there but really to analyze uh, both uh, experience uh, and trying to uh, to um, uh, take on account the uh, the differences. So there are differences com coming from uh, the time, the, the dimension of time, and of course of space. Because in installation, sometimes you uh, share the same space uh, with the object, which uh, it's not the case uh, on the stage uh, for the most of uh, of the example. Well, of course, Bill Vaughan, but Bill Vaughan, it's really kind of installation in a way so and of course there are more and more hybrid production between uh, performative art uh, performing arts and uh, installation um, and that's important also too thank you so much so um actually we have the panel at uh, uh in, in maybe less than 10 minutes I, I see that Sylvia has uh, maybe a question. I, if it is very, very short, maybe just to give us the time for, for let's say, going to the toilet. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. And thank you, Professor Peace, for this very interesting and rich presentation. I just want to relate to one aspect of your presentation about how trouble triggers another type of consciousness. If you can shortly just uh, tell me what are the direction of this or what type of consciousness uh, were you referring to thank you very much again sorry so can you uh, i i didn't yes hear your yes. question so my question was about um, uh, one moment in the presentation when uh, the you affirmed that the trouble triggers another type of consciousness and yes. i was curious to know if you can develop more and and tell us yes. which direction yeah. Yes, the, the, is, is the consciousness of not knowing. That's what, as I was saying to, to Salvatore, because you say, yeah, we work on to understand. And maybe I, I, I say that maybe it's, it's really important to not to understand in a way and stay uh, with the trouble and live with the trouble, I, I would say, uh, with uh, our way. Mm -hmm. so, Posing questions. Exactly. So I think that behavioral, anyway, that kind of object, behavioral object, in a way, try to work on that frontier, on that, on that uh, boundaries. I saw Zaven as some. <laughs> the, the mark. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, thanks to Emmanuel, uh, because uh, for the first time we we listen a statement about objects. <laughs> and so I'm very thankful about, about this uh, presentation. It was very useful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very, no, knows very well that he is one of our inspiration and of our also historical example that we, very important for us. So thank you, Zaven too. So I think we can uh, end here, if you agree. Uh, and so let's meet uh, in the main uh, room. I think you have, in any case, you have the link in the file eventually. Uh, we can discuss with the other participants, so to the other uh, to the panels. Uh, thank you again, uh, Emanuele. Thank you again, Shkarishi. Thank you again, Theo, for... Uh, <laughs> for um, Impersonating uh, some. Yes, exactly. <laughs>
and uh, and see you later. Yeah. Bye.